Well, praise the Lord, my friends. Bless you all. Hallelujah. Sharabatiarabrata. Glory be to God, friends. God bless you. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. Let me know where you're watching from. Live Bula from Fiji. I'm now here in the beautiful island nation of Fiji. Hallelujah. Uh, it's so good to see you all. It's been a hot minute. It's been almost two months since I've done one of these Facebook Lives, these broadcasts. I want to say I love you. I've missed you all. Uh, it's been an incredible time traveling the nations and seeing great harvest, greater glory all across the earth, especially in Asia. And I'm here now in Fiji having a few days left of rest before I come back to the United States of America. Amen. And uh, the beautiful land that we love so much and the country that Jesus loves and the Lord is not done with. Amen. But listen, today I want to talk about what's going on prophetically because there's so much going on and it's so important for us to uh, receive the word of the Lord and to receive comfort from God. All right. And I, re I really believe I could feel right now that there's a comforting anointing. Of course, the comforter is the Holy Spirit. And I can really sense right now there's a comforting anointing where the fathers wanted to release comfort over uh, the church, over the children of God. So I want to talk to you today. What's going on prophetically? I'm here in Nandi area, actually in Denaru here in Fiji. That's my second time here in Fiji. And I've been having a wonderful extensive time of rest and Shabbat with God. Just, uh, you know, I've been traveling the nations. Uh, this is my seventh country in the last seven weeks. And, uh, you know, I've been traveling like a madman preaching the gospel. So once again, I want to thank you all for your love and your prayers. But I'm here in Fiji now uh, enjoying some deep extended time of prayer and rest and enjoyment with the Lord before I come back home to the United States. Come on, who's excited for the high holy days and who's excited for what God is about to do in, uh, you know, this end of the year time, this fall season in the last month, really in 5784, the Hebrew year 5784. And so, you know, I'm excited. Uh, things are spurring up. Things are increasing, intensifying. Amen. And the spirit of God is moving like never before. So I'm just praying and getting ready preparing myself even for 2025, all right? I'm in a season right now where I'm praying into 5785 and even into 2025, praise God. So, um, of course, there's a lot happening, a lot going on, so I'm gonna talk to you about a number of things, amen? And uh, I haven't done these broadcasts in a while, so the light is uh, kind of hurting my eyes, so please excuse me. Um, praise the Lord, shakara brata. But listen, um, today, I want to talk about what's happening prophetically. I am ministering this Sunday here in Suva, Fiji. My first time going over to Suva side. I'm here in the beautiful island nation of Fiji. And I'll be ministering in Suva, Fiji on Sunday. And then Monday, I return back to the Los Angeles. So please be keeping me in prayer for safety and coverage all around. Amen and amen. But I want to speak prophetically what's going on right now because... Of course, today we see in, in the Appalachian High School in Georgia, we see that there was a mass shooting, uh, a mass shooting, I believe it's four that's wounded, right? Or excuse me, four that, uh, four fatalities. So four uh, people that have died and 30 people have been wounded in this Appalachian High School shooting. And uh, it's such a shame uh, it, it's such a sad thing to see these uh, acts of terror and these acts of violence rise and manifest. But we know that the enemy is angry. And Satan, uh, the father of lies, is, you know, uh, like a roaring lion prowling around to, you know, to seeking whom he it may devour. And so we must truly be on guard and be prayerful. Thank you so much. Uh, Makalesi Suraki for welcoming me here in Fiji. <clears throat> but of course today in the United States in Georgia, uh, there was a mass school shooting, horrible, probably one of the worst of its kind, especially that we've seen in the last decade. Um, and of course you see Pastor Greg Locke uh, 
incredible, influential pastor man of God, uh, the one who <clears throat> was critically acclaimed for um, protesting against the lockdowns and being a pro-Trumper, and eventually, of course, uh, produces, I think directs, but put out, puts out the movie called Come Out in Jesus' Name, where, you know, last night, uh, as Pastor Greg and Taisha Locke are coming back to their home, uh, they find 40 to 50 uh, uh, shells, uh, most likely an automatic rifle, uh, was shot at their house. And I believe nobody was home at that time, uh, but incredible, such a horrible, horrific thing. You know, the enemy is really, you know, trying to stir things up. And it's because we're in a high holy day season. But Jesus said that if they hated me, they will hate you. The Lord said that blessed are you those who are persecuted. And, you know, this is in modern day America. And I believe he lives in Tennessee. But, uh, you know, this is what's happening, friends. You know, the world will hate us. The world hates Christians. Right? Because we shine with the glory of God. We are shining the light of Jesus. And so praise God that um, that Pastor Greg and his family is safe. So let's pray for Pastor Greg Locke and his wonderful, beautiful family. Obviously, you know, they've been under death threats and they've been uh, attacked, persecuted left and right from Christians, so-called, and, and even from, uh, you know, the world. But you know what? Just because we disagree does not mean that we should wish harm against people, right? Just because we disagree, you may disagree with their method or their doctrine, uh, but it, you know, that does not give us an open excuse, you know, to be able to harm or to try to, you know, commit assault or battery or murder or homicide, right? So thank you Lord for protection, for the hedge of God's protection, amen. Well, listen, um, there's a lot going on, but of course it's September. And in this month of September, of course, historically, we're coming into 9-11. Uh, of course, the anniversary of 9-11, the terrorist attacks that took place uh, in New York uh, at the Twin Towers. This alleged uh, terrorist attack, of course, it was all set up, right, by these evil government agencies, the Alphabet Gang, FBI, CIA, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but as we're coming into even the anniversary or the remembrance of this terrorist attack, 9-11, this, the greatest terrorist attack against uh, America, actually. And who here knows that this immigration, illegal immigration border crisis, this is also a terrorist attack that's happening, right? Uh, not just domestically, but internationally, globally, right? So there's things happening on the inside of America, but forces from the outside coming in. Um, but even as we're coming into the remembrance of 9-11 uh, with solemnness and with uh, humility and brokenness, um, I really sense an urgency in my spirit that we need to pray for uh, the release of angels. We need to pray for the hedge of God's protection because there's something about this month. September is a transitionary month because it's the last month of, of the Hebrew year. And typically during September and October, as we come into the fall seasons, there's uh, demonic holidays. They're not holy days at all, but they're demonic festivities, like Halloween is in October. Uh, did you know that September to October, this time frame uh, is the largest Hindu festival, is the largest Buddhist festival, the largest Islamic festival. And so these demonic Festivities and portals are, of course, counterfeits of the High Holy Days, counterfeits of the 10 days of all Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. So there's a counterfeit in the supernatural demonic realm in that world. And so in September and in October, it's very important for us to be aware of the times to be prayed up, to be covered up as we always are. Amen. But specifically in this month of September, I sense that we need to pray against terrorist attacks. We need to pray against these vigilantes, the spirit of murder, the spirit of death. Come on, lift up your hands. We just break off the spirit of death right now. In Jesus' name, the spirit of death uh, inoculated, induced, inducted by the spirit of Jezebel. 
by a harlotry, adultery, idolatry. We just break down right now, destroy the spirit of death that's trying to hover and come over and take over. You can literally see it, friends. You can literally see the spirit of death take over cities and nations and systems. Look at what's going on in, in even in places like San Francisco, right? And I'm speaking prophetically to you because I have a lot to share. It's just bubbling out of my spirit, if that's okay. But look at San Francisco, such a vibrant, uh, beautiful economic tourist attraction. Now it's going on in San Francisco, right? Businesses are moving out. People are moving out. Uh, businesses are crashing. You know, once you excuse, once once you put out God in the Bible, and once you start I, I idolizing. Uh, homosexuality and you start idolizing sin, then what happens? The curse begins to come forth. And what happens right now, it becomes a graveyard of churches. And now the enemy comes over and infiltrates. And it's a spirit of death. Death in businesses, death and you know, just no sense of security, safety. And that's what's happening all across the earth in, in different cities. You can see that in Michigan and Minnesota. But there's a turnaround anointing. There's a breaker anointing that's being released. And the Holy Spirit is releasing faith. Someone say faith. The Holy Ghost is releasing faith so that the spirit of revival, awakening, breakthrough will manifest. Because truly, this is the battle of the end times. It's for the soul of our nation. For the soul of the cities, all right? We are in a battle right now, friends. And I really believe right now in the spirit the Lord is upgrading our mantles. He's upgrading our prayer life, upgrading our discernment. Amen. The Spirit of God, Reka Soto, is releasing a turnaround anointing, a breaker anointing. Because the level of the level of glory we need to operate in, it, it must be greater than the level of deception. It must be greater than the level of darkness. The, the level of light, of course, light is always stronger than darkness. But the amount of light, the level, the magnitude that's manifested must be greater than the level of darkness or the release of darkness. And so God's training us. He's getting us ready, preparing us for the greater glory, for the greater release. Amen. And so in midst of these shakings and testings, in midst of these attacks, in midst of the enemy attacking, he's also upgrading and imparting and getting us ready. He's building you up. He's building us up. I mean, he's building you up. Can I get an amen? The Lord is building us up. And he, the mighty right hand is lifting up. Amen. And in, in a couple of hours, I'm actually going to release a prophetic word on YouTube. Just a couple of hours even from now. Uh, amen. And I'm going to talk about the divine lifting and sifting of God. Because his mighty right hand is lifting us up. All right, he opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Everyone say grace. And I believe in this season, the Spirit of God has wanted to release grace. And he's wanting to lift us up so that we're higher and we're above and not below and not beneath. I mean, everything in your life, your finances, your relationships, your thinking, your vision, your faith, is going up to a whole new level, a whole nother dimension. And that's really the battle. The battle is... Will I stay stuck or will I upgrade and break through and break up? Because truly your upgrade is not for you, but it's for those around you. The building up anointing is not just for you, but it's for those around you. It's for your children, your community. It's for your nation. It's for the community that you represent. Amen. So God's building us up. He's lifting us up. Hallelujah. Because there's a greater glory. There's a greater level. Amen. I'm so happy to see all these Face, it's been a while since I've seen y'all. It's been a hot minute. I've been traveling, of course. But I'm speaking prophetically. What is going on right now? What is going on? Well, there's, there's a divine lifting, but there's also a bringing down low. And we're seeing many people not only get demoted, but we're also seeing many people get promoted. Because in this season, the Lord is adjuring us. He's heeding us. 
Continue to keep your hands clean, your heart clean, your mouth clean, your ears, your eyes. Continue to have clean hands and a pure heart. Because there's a greater ascension up the hill, the mountain of the Lord. Amen. So what's going on prophetically? There's a few things I, I want to talk about today. But if you're with me today, say amen. There's a few things, but... I keep feeling this verse very strong that I want to get into here. It's in Amos chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. Amos 3, 7 to 8. God does nothing in the earth unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Does this mean that the prophets alone have access to his secrets? No. All right. But it means that there's a dimension of God that's released by the mouth of the prophet. Amen. So. Actually, the last part, I think, is just commentate, commentation. It's not actually the verse. So, um, so let me just, all right, let's copy and paste that. But I just keep feeling this word in my spirit that this is really a moment where God is saying, come up higher, come up higher. He wants to show us some things. What did the Lord command Apostle John? Come up higher. Because I want to show you what must take place. Amen. Let's just... Go to that verse here. Amen. Arraba <clears throat> Soto. Because there's a higher level, a higher dimension. Amen. There's a higher level, a higher dimension of the spirit of the things of God that he's wanting to reveal to us. Amen. Ah, I love this. Praise God. Let's go into this. And I hope you all miss me because I've missed you. Revelation 4.1. After this, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, say first, which means there, there may have been other voices, right? But the first voice, which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, come up here and I will show you what, what must take place. Now, I want you to think about this. You must first come up to see what's next. Unless Apostle John, by faith, came up higher, a higher level of faith, higher level of love, higher level of vision, unless he came up higher, he would not see what would take place. So the vision is connected to your elevation. Your future is connected to your promotion, right? So as you come up higher, you will see further. As you come up higher, you will see even more. And so that's what God's saying right now. He wants us to heed ourselves, to have an ear to ear, because he's releasing rhema, he's releasing revelation, dreams and visions. And the Lord wants us to come up higher. Now, what does that mean? If, if we're gonna come up higher, it means we must let go. Say let go, we must let go of certain things that are holding us down or back. We must let go of certain friends, certain people, certain actions, habits, patterns. If you want to come up higher, let me give you an example, right? Everybody knows that uh, one of the ways you build wealth, financial wealth in your life is you increase your income, but you also cut your expenses. Whatever you cut will determine your income or your increase the influx. So it's important for us to cut, to make space, to make room before the next level. So if you want to come up higher, many times you must let go of certain patterns, habits, mindsets, circles, associations, dreams, some old things, the old anointing, old wines, because you must let go of certain things. You must let it die. Because when your Isaac dies, There'll be resurrection. When you're willing to let go of your Isaac to die, truly it will become a person of a promise. The promise will be manifested. The covenant of God will be manifested. So come up higher so I will show you what, what will take place after this. Someone say after this. Now, obviously this was prophetically for uh, the end times. This was, and of course it already happened pretty much. In 70 AD time, uh, the original time of when this book was written and spoken by the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. But it's going to happen again, in a sense, and that's 
what it means to be prophetic, or that's what it means for there to be eschatology, eschatological prophecy, right? End times prophecy. But after this, I want to say after this, okay? Which means there's always something that God's doing after this. This may be the best moment of your life. This may be the greatest season of your life. You may be in a tired, dry season. You may be broke as a joke. You may be sad and low, but there's always an after this. There's always an after this. There's something else that God's doing. So once again, I, I posted uh, the verse here and I started off and it says with this verse in Amos 3, 7 to 8, God does nothing in the earth unless he first reveals it to his prophets. Amen. He does nothing in the earth unless he first <clears throat> reveals it to his prophets. So there's fresh revelation God's releasing. He wants us to come up higher because there's a new rhema, new direction, new instruction, dreams and visions, impartation that the Spirit of God wanted to release. Now, if you are believing for new direction, new clarity, new vision, then say, I receive it. Because the Spirit of God is breathing, He's moving, and He's doing a new thing in your life. He's doing a new thing globally all around. Amen. See, amount of attack is a precursor or is a sign of the amount of blessing that's coming. So if you've been feeling a holding back, if you've been feeling a peeling back, if you've been feeling an attack or, or a backlash or retaliation, you've been feeling like a rubber band, things are held back, that means that God is about to release greater glory. That means that the Lord is about to do something new and fresh in your life, amen. And that's just what God does. That's what the Spirit of God does. So in this season, there's upgrades, there's increase, but He wants us to incline our ears, incline our hearts to the Lord so that we may hear afresh. Because there's fresh word, fresh rhema. Amen. God does nothing in the earth unless He first reveals His secrets to His servants, the prophets. Are you a servant of God? Are you a son, daughter of God? Are you a prophetic servant, a prophetic vessel of the Lord. That means that he's going to reveal a secret. Someone say amen. Come on. Remember, secrets has to do with trust. Secrets has to do with intimacy. Secrets has to do with love, okay? Secrets are shared, released through trust, through covenant, through intimacy, through a binding, right? Because it binds you together. So who's ready for the glory of God? Who's ready? for the realms of mystery and secrets to be released. Because he's preparing us, he's getting us ready for what's to come, for what is happening. Like I said, around this time of the year, September to October, there's, you know, the spirit of death, the spirit of murder, fear, homicide. Why? Because there's demonic portals that are open around this time of the year. Like I said, around this time of the year, there's always the biggest Buddhist festival, Hindu festival and Muslim festival, right? And like I said, those are all counterfeit demonic portals of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the 10 days of all. Because the enemy always is a counterfeiter. He's always a fake, amen? All right, now, Shadabata. I, I believe right now the Lord is releasing light and illumination, all right? Light and, and illumination. Now let's go to this verse here, amen? The Lord is releasing light and illumination. All right, so let's go over to Psalm 13, 3. If you're with me today, say amen. Thanks for all the likes, hearts, and shares. Psalm 13, 3, here the word of the Lord says, Consider and answer me, O my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep. The sleep of death. Light of my eyes. What does that mean? That means give me new vision. Give me new eyesight. I want to see according to your will. I want to see the things of God. So, of course, Jesus said if your heart or if your soul is dark, then your eyes will be dark. And many times, of course, we could see things in people's eyes. We could see spirits or demonic entities, you know, different issues that are living, dwelling, ongoing in the souls and the bodies of people just by looking into the eye gate. 
So in this season, the Spirit of God is wanting to anoint our eyes, our ears, so that we will see and hear, we will receive, we will even perceive, we will perceive the things of the Lord, the Word of God. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. So in this season, the Spirit of God is wanting to light up our eyes so that we will be ahead, the ahead and not behind, the head and not the tail. There's a new vision, there's new light that's coming. So I want to declare over you, there's illumination, there's exposure, uh, there's uh, just an exposure of the cockroaches. Things are shifting in your life. Like God has literally given illumination to your life. And he's saying, son, daughter, I want to show you some things. I want to show you what will take place after this. What will take place after? I want to show you. Hallelujah. Things are being revealed. Things are being exposed. Things are being released. Hallelujah. And it's the word of the Lord. It's the word of God. It's the hand of Jesus. It's the doing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, I also had this word, which we're going to get into. And I know, I know I'm just kind of jumping around. But this is what happens when you're just prophetically processing. And you're flowing with the river of prophecy. Is that all right today? Amen. I know it's been a hot minutes since I've seen you. Uh, Jeremiah 47, 2. Jeremiah 47, 2. Thus says the Lord, Behold, waters are rising out of the north and shall become an overflowing torrent. Shall become an overflowing. They shall overflow the land and all that's in it. The city and those who dwell in it, men shall cry out and every inhabitant of the land shall wail. Now this, in, in its context, Jeremiah 47, this is, uh, you know, a judgment verse, a judgment chapter, excuse me, or a pro prophetic judgment, all right, against the Philistines, right? Against the Philistines. So, but what I want to highlight is the waters will rise, okay? Because there's a rising up of the waters. The water levels are changing. All right, and even here I'm in Fiji, and I believe we need to pray against tsunamis and hurricanes. And uh, you know, it's it's ongoing, it's happening all the time everywhere in the world. But the waters are rising. Behold, waters are rising out of the north. I want you to think, and shall become an overflowing torrent. So there's waters of judgment of the enemy, but there's also waters of cleansing, which means the waters are rising. Which means that things are going to another level. Things are increasing. It means that, you know, uh, the bowls of heaven are being filled. Isn't that incredible? The Bible says, hallelujah, uh, that the bowls of heaven are being filled. And what do the bowls of heaven stand for? It stands for uh, prayers, right? The prayers of the saints. Hallelujah. Revelation 5.8. If you're with me today, say amen. Revelation 5.8. Sharabrata tarabrata. But there is judgment being released. There is overflow being released. There is harvest being released. And of course, the prophetic word of the Lord for the month of September that I release and prophesy uh, is that this is a month of supernatural harvest. So that means, yes, that's right. Someone commented that it's a tipping point in the spirit. Which means that the waters are rising to overflow, to tipping point. Which means you're coming into a climactic moment of revelation. A moment of birthing. <clears throat> of course, September is the ninth month of 2024. And it takes nine months to fully birth a baby, right? I want you to say mature, right? Because you're not going to be premature. You're going to be mature. You're going to be right on time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right on the money, right in God's divine Kairos timing. And here the Bible says that the harp and bowl, the golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So there's a filling and there's an overflow, which means I believe in the season God is saying that there is waters that are rising, waters of prophecy, waters of revelation, waters of finances, waters of judgment, amen, waters of healing. Which means that we're in a season right now where the waters are rising and we must be aware and watch 
the water levels that are rising up because it's time to birth. It's time to release. It's time for the waters to break, for the dams to break. It's time for the open heavens, the overflow of God. And when the waters rise, hear me now, some people will not be able to swim, which means they're not gonna be able to live anymore. They're gonna be overcome, right? Just like the waters rising was judgment against the Philistines in this context, in this passage. This, the waters rising, it's going to be judgment against the enemies, against some enemies, right? Hallelujah. But when you are walking in the will of God and the accordance of the Holy Spirit, accordance with God's word, when you, that's right, you, when you are walking in the will of the Lord, guess what? You will be able to walk on water. You will be able to walk on the heights of the waters that are rising, of the water levels that are rising. Someone say amen. Someone say preach, Dr. Ben. So we are in a season right now where there's a breaking open, a releasing of the waters. The waters are rising. For some, it'll be waters of judgment. For some, it'll be waters of blessing, waters of cleansing. Amen. Which means now is the time. It's a tipping point. Bam. It's recompense. It's due time. It's time for the big baby to come out. Someone say amen. So it's birthing, right? So what's happening prophetically? I shared a number of things. There's a new vision, right? There's, uh, he's giving light to our eyes. Hallelujah. He's wanting to speak wisdom, revelation, mysteries, the secrets of God. Hallelujah. We understand that this is a very prophetic time and season, a very important season uh, where God is getting us ready for the level of warfare, shaking persecution that the enemy is trying to release. But we rebuke that. We release the wall of fire. We release the host of heaven. Amen. We release the glory of God. Bam, bam. And listen, just lift up your hands. I could see a splurge, an influx, a deluge, a tsunami of the glory of God that's coming to you, that's coming to your house. Arabo, so this is a season of supernatural harvest. It's a season of reaping. It's a season of overflowing. Amen. Just I. I read in, in Jeremiah 47, where the waters are rising, hallelujah, and the Bible says, it shall become an overflowing torrent. It will overflow the land and all that fills it, right? So there's a filling and an overflowing. And I believe God is about to do a new thing in your life. The Lord's gonna do a new thing in your life in this season. All of God's people say amen and amen. I'm in this hotel and I hear kids outside. I'm about to go out and... Shout up on day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless them. <laughs> I love kids, but come on. I'm preaching a word. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus. But listen, uh, right now, I want to declare this word over you. Just lift up your hands. Father, I thank you that in this month of September, that you're safe, you're secure, you're covered, and you're overflowing with the blessings of God. There's Psalm 91 angels being released. The angel of God are being released. The word of the Lord is coming over, over you, is coming to you. The spirit of God is brooding over like he hovers over the waters of the sea, the waters of the earth. And the spirit of God is brooding, is hovering. And he's about to birth, he's about to incubate, he's about to do something fresh and new in your life, amen. And we must be ready, my friends, we must be ready. Because I believe things are gonna start happening quickly with greater intensity, with greater increase. There, there's gonna be such an awareness of God in your life. Come on, somebody keep giving us hearts and life. Let's break the 150 to 200 today, amen. There's gonna be such an increase and in intensity of the awareness of God that things are gonna happen quickly. I see the spirit of acceleration. I see God breathing on, uh, on you, over you. He's breathing on prophecy. He's breathing prophetically over the promises, the things he's, he's spoken to you in secret. But even as we're about to close this year, 5784, we're about to step into the new Hebrew year, 5785. There's an increase. There's a stirring. There's an intensity. There's a fierceness. Who knows the level of warfare is not the same as it was five, six years ago. 
Why? Because the devil knows he's losing and the enemy knows his time for the abyss, the second death is coming very soon. Can I get a witness in his place? It's coming very soon, y'all. All right, the greatest revival is breaking out. Greatest move of God we've ever seen is breaking out. Amen. And the spirit of God is about to do something new and fresh. But we need to break through. We need to press in. All right, we need to stay on guard. We need to watch and pray, the Lord says. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Jesus said, watch and pray. Because the enemy is trying to pick at you and peck, you know, trying to, trying to take off, you know, take like a scavenger spirit. But we need to watch and pray and be aware and be on guard of the tactics of the enemy. I want you to say this. I will not slip. I will not trip. I will not fall. And I will not fail. Come on. I want to say that again. I will not trip. I will not slip. I will not fail. And I will not fall. He's ordering and directing your steps. And you shall go from glory to glory. He's ordering. And, come on. Every step you take is anointed. Every step you take is ordained by God. You will not trip. You will not slip. You will not fail. You will not fall. Somebody say amen. Come on. Lift up your hands. Father, I thank you for anointed feet. I thank you for anointed mouths, anointed eyes, anointed minds. So the Father, I thank you for your anointing, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I feel revelation coming. I feel a spirit of intercession. And listen, the spirit of intercession that's coming right now is going to break some of you out of the slump, the slumber, the slothfulness, the slowness. Mandere carobroso. There's a break or anointing. The spirit of intercession is being released. Hallelujah. Which means there's new revelation coming to you. There's a fresh oil, a fresh anointing is coming over you. Thank you, Jesus. Rebe Sokoraba. He's binding the enemy. He is binding the enemy. He's releasing angels to bind the enemy. Jamata, thank you, Jesus. I see victory coming to you. I see victory coming to you. And the Lord is about to do a public display of his victory. Amen. Oh, I feel the verse. I feel the word of the Lord. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Amen. Colossians 2, verse 15. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Here, the word of the Lord says, he disarmed the rulers and authorities <laughs> and putting them to open shame, to open public shame by triumphing over them in him. Amen. So there is a disarming of every enemy force, a disarming of every demonic force. What, what you used to struggle with, you have dominion over. What you used to struggle with, you will have authority over. If you struggled with poverty, if you struggled with sin, what you have struggled with, you will have dominion over. Some would say amen. So there's a dominion anointing, a release of the power of God. Hallelujah. Shana, for in the presence, every struggle fades away. In his glory, every struggle becomes nothing. The mountain will be moved. Every mountain will disappear and dissipate in the presence of God. Someone say amen. So there's a new release. Thank you, Jesus, of the power and the glory of God. Listen, friends, right now, there's an upgrade, which means he's getting us ready. Hallelujah. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise up a standard against him. Hallelujah. God's about to do something great in your life. Something great in your ministry, your business, your family, your marriage. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the glory of God. I can just feel and sense angels swirling around, hovering over you. For the Lord says, Jehovah Nisi, I am your banner, says God. The angels of deliverance are hovering over you. They encircle you. There's an open heavens. 
He's about to do a new thing in your life. Somebody say amen. I plead the blood of Jesus right now. Over all your family members, your children, your children, over all your possessions, your bank accounts, your possessions, your homes, your property, every single thing you have will be protected by the angels of God, by the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. No foul, unclean, defiled thing shall touch it, shall come near it. And any hand of evil that tries to come against you or be stretched out against you will be brought to nothing. He's dealing with it. He's dealing with it. He's doing it. God's doing it. Somebody say amen. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Precious Jesus. Listen, I want to end with this right now. In this month of September, God is about to answer your prayers swiftly. It's going to feel like you've had to press in and war and really break through. But swift prayers are going to be answered. Amen. Even by the mid to end of this month. Hear me now. By the mid to end of September, there's going to be prayers being answered. So from now till then, the waters are rising. The bowls are being filled. Amen. But from mid to end of September, prayers will be answered publicly in Jesus' name. Some would say public redemption recompense. Death cannot hold you. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I can just feel the spirit of intercession resting on us right now. Which is really also the realm of revelation. Because intercession and revelation goes hand in hand. So I can feel the realm of revelation and intercession just hover and brood over us right now. Because the Lord's about to speak and move and do a new thing. Amen. Jesus. I just have to uh, sing this. Thank you, Jesus. Death cannot hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the bones of sin and grave. Where am I? <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Rabasa, the devil is alive. Where you at? Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names you have no rival and you have no equal now and forever god you reign yours is the kingdom and yours is the glory yours is the name above all names amen and amen. Honestly, that's, this is probably the strongest of my vote, even though I'm tired right now, you can see it in my eyes, because I've been back to back working today. This is like the, the best my voice has been probably in, in the last two, three months, since Cuba <laughs> to now. And do it again, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lift up your hands. Father, bless your people. Bless your children. Thank you for the power of God. Listen, I know in the United States, it's evening time. Some of you are going to receive a profound visitation night dream tonight. Even after this broadcast in Jesus' name. And for those who are here, like it's daytime here. It's almost 4 p.m. here in Fiji. 
There's going to be a realm of revelation glory. That's going to hover over you. Noticeable, tangible, evidential, differential. I don't even know this word, differentiable. <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, friends, bless you. I'm glad I could minister to you and just talk with you. I'm alive. I know it's been a while. I've missed you all. I've been traveling seven countries in the last seven weeks. And after two months, I'm finally doing a live broadcast with you here, fresh from the fiery pit of prayer. Love you all. Bless you. Make sure you like, subscribe. Give this page a like. Give us a follow. Share this broadcast. If you agree and bear witness with this prophetic broadcast, what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. Amen and amen. God bless.